Welcome to Dr. Pat TV. We're looking at functions and one of the prime business examples that we have are the demand and supply curves that we have and looking for equilibrium point. So uh, let's take a moment to look over this example. Okay, so what I'm looking at is a demand for tutoring. That's the example I'm using. Um, in the real world, what happens is I put out a price there saying, hey, I'll tutor math for $25. And if I do that, then basically I may get 11 hours, you know, enough people um, that I would actually earn and work 11 hours. If I went to uh, $40 an hour, uh, basically, uh, because it's a higher price, less people want to do that. So then I might only get about five uh, hours of work that way. So what we're looking at here is a nice relationship, a business relationship between a price of an item, uh, a good of or a service, and the amount, the quantity that will sell, you know, that kind of thing. So demand. And demand graphically, oh, it's kind of nice. Um, it can be a straight line. doesn't have to be. It could be curved. But basically, the demand curve, demand line, um, is always decreasing. Because we're going on with this idea that when you raise the price of something, less people are interested in it. Less people will buy it. Okay. Now, there's a problem here between us economists and mathematicians. When we're looking at supply and demand, the quantity produced and sold depends on the price. So if you go back to that function relationship, who's the input, who's the output, for mathematically speaking, price is the input, quantity is the output. Okay, but <clears throat> here's the catch. A mathematician wants to put price on the horizontal axis and quantity on the vertical because that's what we do. We put input on the horizontal, output on the vertical. But the economists, they don't. They want to keep their quantity on the, the horizontal. No matter what the mathematical relationship is, that's what they want because then it transfers easy to the uh, formulas for profit, revenue, and cost depending on the quantity. So here's a case where uh, mathematicians and the Economists don't like each other. They don't get along. Economists are going to put quantity down here and price up here on the vertical. So, so I just want you to be careful. Whether you're textbook or not, just be careful looking at that. In the end, we'll show some math. We can figure it all out. Okay, so now the other relationship we have, not, not only demand, we also have supply. Now supply goes in the opposite direction. Demand is decreasing because the higher the price, the less number of people want it. But supply goes the other way because if... Uh, I'm here in an area that uh, everybody can charge $30 per tutoring. You might have 10 people joining in or, or a few people offering 10 hours. But then all of a sudden you, you find an area that's charging $50 or, or, or a group of people, an area willing to pay $50 per hour for, for tutoring. Then all of a sudden you're going to have more math tutors in that area willing to supply more hours. And so that's the idea here is as the price goes up, quantity goes up for supply. So it's really easy to tell the demand and supply graphs. If the, uh, graphs, if they're not labeled, we can find those out really quickly. Supply is an increasing, demand is a decreasing graph. All right. <clears throat> so basically, one of the important uh, economic uh, ideas that we have is where does demand equal supply? Okay, so that's one of the things. They call that the equilibrium point. So econ people, they like to find that equilibrium point. And that's basically where the two graphs will cross each other. Okay, so when demand curve crosses, intersects the supply curve, what we have is what we call the equilibrium point. Now, graphically, I'm guessing. So when I look at this graph, what my guess is is something like 9.5 hours for and about $20, $29. So when when the uh when the uh, price is $29, so when people are willing to pay $29 uh, per hour for tutoring, then basically we're going to have a supply that's going to match that uh, demand. And so that's a nice uh, situation. Everybody's happy in that situation. The the people who want tutoring, they're getting uh, the, set, the amount of tutoring that they desire. Okay, so that's what's nice about equilibrium. Okay, now that was uh, reading it from the graph. How would we find it from uh, from using our formulas? Uh, since uh, both the demand and supply 
uh, were both lines in the example that I have here, we're finding the equation of the line. So let's just kind of do some a quick little review of that. So when you're finding the equation of a line, pick two points on the graph. Uh, each of these points here, I've got uh, 1 and 11, that's the quantity, and then I have uh, 15, 25, that's the price. So my data points are Q and P, so Q comma P. You can make it the other way. Your formula is going to be a little bit different, but in the end, we'll get our final answer of the equilibrium point. Two ways of going this. Okay, so once you've got your two data points, you can pick any two data points off of these uh, lines. Then find your slope, change of the output over the change of input. So in this case, uh, 50 and 25, they're like my Y values on top, and then 1 and 11 are like my X values. Just do the calculation, I got a negative 0.25 slope, which is good, because remember, demand graph, it's decreasing, so it needs to have a negative slope. Okay, then when you got your slope, you go back to this formula over here, you plug in your slope, you plug in your price next to its P, so P minus 50, or you pick one of the points, it does not matter which point you pick, I'm picking the 1 comma 50, so I do P minus 50, because 50 is a price, and then I do Q minus 1, because that was the quantity, and so uh, I put a little D here, just to indicate, and you see this in your econ textbooks, I put a D there for demand, so this is the quantity of demand, because we're going to have two different formulas, and we want to make sure that we kind of identify which quantity we're talking about. And so then basically, we've got our formula ready to go. I multiply the negative 2.5 through, and then I brought this 50 over by adding, and that's where you're getting this 52.5. In a similar process for supply, I pick two points off of the graph. Any two points will work. I find the slope by doing, you know, the change of y's over change of x's kind of idea. And so uh, uh, I get 2.5. It's a positive one which is good because supply is positive. It's a positive relationship. And then I pick one of the data points. I picked 1850. I plugged in the slope. I plugged in 50 with the price. I plug in 18 for the quantity. I put a QS here because, oops, but I didn't do there. A QS for supply. And then when I put it there, I'm supposed to put an S here as well. Um, that gives me basically, uh, let's see. Let's see how I did this. I took the 2.5, multiplied by that negative 18, then I added the 50, brought it over, and that's going to give me a 5. So this should be 2.5 QS plus 5. I apologize for that. And then when we're done with that, when we're ready, we take the um, two formulas and we set them equal to each other to find the equilibrium point. Uh, and so uh, what did I do here? Looks like I'm going to uh, subtract 2.5Q from both sides and I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Now, I started with a quantity of demand and a quantity of supply. And now you're looking at this next line going, dude, what happened to the S and the D? Just got a plain old Q. Well, this is the Y. I can get away with this this one time is because we're looking for equilibrium point we're looking for the intersection we're looking for when quantity is the same for demand and supply so there's no need to label the two things as different quantity of demand and quantity of supply because for this one situation the quantity is the same next step algebraically to solve for our Q is to divide both sides by 5 and I get a quantity of 9.5 which matches my guess so that's a pretty good uh, graph reading on my part there I'm gonna pat my back there and then uh, what we need to do is find price so we take that 9.5 plug it into either of the two equations because it does not matter both equations should get us the same answer so when I plug the 9.5 into my uh, formula for supply I get 28 0.75. Ooh, just a little off from my guess from the graph, but within a good ballpark. So algebraically, we have an equilibrium point that has a price of 28.75. That will give us a, a quantity of 9.5. Okay, new concept or another additional concept, not completely new, um, is shortage or supply. Shortage is the situation when people are demanding, um, they want a quantity, but basically uh, the suppliers can't, uh, can't uh, fill, fill the needs. So that's a shortage. When there's more supply than desire, uh, that's called a surplus. So basically when the quantity of demand is smaller than the quantity uh, supplied, surplus.
Okay, so now let's take a look at this. So if the price is $20, so if we're in an area that basically everybody's charging $20 and people want to pay for it, $20 for tutoring, here's what's going to happen. We look at this chart here and there's my price of $20. Then I look over here and I see the quantity demanded is 13 and the quantity supplied is 6. That means we have more demand than supply. That's going to create a shortage. More people are wanting it. It's going to flow off the shelves. The shelves are going to be bare. Seven people are going to be short. So seven people, they're demanding it, but they're not going to get it. So we're going to have seven hours short. Now, when the price is $40, remember what's going to happen. Demand's going to go down, but supply is going to go up because uh, people don't want to pay more. And so when we look at $40 here on our price, we've got a quantity demanded of only five. So five hours are demanded, but there are, there are 14 hours. There's tutors willing to give 14 hours. That means we have like, what, about nine hours extra. That's called a surplus. That would be like nine hours just shit, uh, sitting on the shelf. Tutors just kind of waiting around going, hey, I'm willing to tutor. But at $40, there's not going to be that many people desperate to pay $40 for the tutoring. So that's kind of an introduction to su surplus and shortage. Just basically identify the quantities demanded and supplied and make that comparison. Now, graphically, I got to be careful here. It's because I've got a graph here that matches the econ people, and I've got quantity on the, ba uh, the horizontal axes, and I got price on the vertical. And so when I'm looking at shortage and surplus, I'm comparing quantities. And so this is how we've got to play this game. It's, it's going to freak some people out. It's, it's different than how we compare graphs in a typical math class. And so let's say we've got our price again of $20. We knew from before when we did the chart on the previous slide that we're going to have a, um, a shortage. And so here's why. So graphically speaking, I'm at $20, and now I'm looking at the horizontal distance between the two. Because at $20, we have a supply of only six hours, and at $20, we have a demand of uh, 13 hours. So that means this horizontal distance right here is seven, seven hours. We're going to be short seven hours because our supply is smaller quantity than the quantity demanded so that's kind of weird um, basically we're looking at the horizontal distance when we have the appropriate econ graph then at forty dollars I'm up here at forty dollars now and now I'm looking again at this horizontal distance between the two graphs this time supply has a larger quantity because it's farther to the right and demand has a smaller quantity because it's closer to the axes and so that vertical dis or excuse me my apologies that horizontal distance of nine um, supply is bigger than demand and so uh, we're gonna have uh, surplus. We have more supply than demand. Thanks. I hope that this made sense a little bit. Talk to you later.